but I first learned about it uh, through LinkedIn. Kevin Beaumont, uh, who's been around forever, uh, very uh, well-known threat intelligence. And uh, as you can see here, Cyber Weatherman posted this leaked, uh, I guess leaked, but posted this memo uh, supposedly from um, the VP and director of the Center for, for Securing the Homeland at MITRE, which is the uh, business unit within MITRE that administers the database, saying that on Wednesday, April 16th, the current contracting pathway for MITRE to develop, operate, and modernize CVE and several other related programs, such as CWE, will expire. The government continues to make considerable efforts to continue MITRE's role in support of the program. Uh, if a break in service were to occur, we anticipate multiple impacts to CVE, including deterioration of national vulnerability databases, so the NIST National Vulnerability Database, for example, relies on CVE, tool vendors, incident response operations, and all manner of critical infrastructure. So I first saw this, I went, no way. I don't believe it. But, of course, Brian Krebs uh, has done the follow-up here, uh, and he says here, so I reached out to MITRE, and they confirmed it is for real. Here's a contract, which is through the Department of Homeland Security and has been renewed annually on the 16th or 17th of April. Uh, MITRE CVE database is likely going offline tomorrow, uh, which would be April 16th. They've told me that for now, historical CVE records will be available at GitHub, which is a GitHub link. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this is this is this is uh, this is kind of big. Uh, so, for those of you not familiar of how this process works, the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures database. Uh, if you find an issue and you want to submit a C and create a CVE for it, what happens is you take your CVE submission and you send it to a CNA, a, 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 CVE, a CVE naming authority. Uh, the CVE database in general and the NIST National Vulnerability Database have been having some serious issues over the past 6 to 12 months. Uh, in fact, actually, I think they might have paused submissions, but they had a backlog of CVE submissions that they just couldn't process in time. They just didn't have enough manpower to do it uh, and to, to handle it. And so uh, there was a huge backlog in that if you submitted a CVE, it could take months uh, for that CVE to actually be published, which is not great, right? So this has been happening for 6, 12 months or so now. And they've been seeing just lots of issues, you know, just various reasons, but essentially didn't have enough manpower. So they've gone through that. They eventually said that, hey, anything. So what they also do is they will routinely go through and, and refresh CVEs with new up-to-date information. So what they've recently said is anything before 2018 will not be refreshed. Uh, they will not uh, look at it again. It just is what it is. And that was presumably so that they could update and deal with all of these new CVEs. CVE database is used by everything. So EDR, threat intelligence, uh, all kinds of vendor uh, vendors uh, use this to, to give up-to-date information. Patch management. So anytime something, well, I mean, Microsoft has their own naming system, but the point is that, you know, it's a, the CVE number is a singular way for everyone to know about the, the same vulnerability. So imagine, I think Microsoft just on their last patch Tuesday put out 126 or 128 patches, uh, which probably all had CVEs, maybe not all of them, but they probably all had CVE numbers. This is, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, it's, it's very concerning, um, that, uh, basically no new CVEs going forward as it stands right now. Now, of course, by the time you watch this video, things might, might've changed, but as it stands right now, uh, no, nothing new will be added to the CVE database. And again, this is how EDR tracks things. This is how threat intelligence tracks things. This is how everybody tracks vulnerabilities, uh, not just in the U.S., but across the world. And so if this database was to go down, which it does appear as though it's going to, uh, unless something happens in the next 24 hours, uh, that's going to be a real issue. Uh, so they have, as you can see here from Krebs, uh, they have told me that for now, historical CVE records will be available at GitHub, which I don't think I've actually clicked this. So now we can check it out. Oh, it's, yeah, so... Uh, it's basically just the CVE database itself. Excuse me. Uh, so it will be available on GitHub, but nothing new will be added. So this is going to require some workarounds from all the vendors that use it. It's going to require some significant engineering just to use the CVE database of the old CVEs. So that's, you know, for nothing new. That's just the old ones. 
um, going forward. It's going to require some serious engineering from a lot of vendors. Uh, and I wonder, I wonder why they waited till the 15th to really sound the alarm. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing because if you look at their, their memo here, um, uh, what does it say? The government continues to make considerable efforts to continue MITRE's role in support of the program. So kind of vague, the, the government continues to make considerable efforts. I have my own issues with MITRE, which I won't get into right now, uh, but that's an interesting line. But at the end of the day, probably their funding is just getting cut or they're not getting nearly enough funding to maintain the database. Who knows? Um, yes, there are lots of cuts going on across the government right now. Uh, but, you know, I, it, I don't know. I don't know. It seems like that from this wording, it seems like they just weren't getting enough uh, of what they needed to maintain the database. So I don't know why they waited so long. I'm curious to see what happens with the engineering, the software engineering that's going to go on to try and fix this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a serious thing. Uh, I hope something gets worked out. Uh, one thought is that maybe the CNAs, the CVE naming authorities, uh, will come together and create their own nonprofit because these CNAs are big companies, uh, most of them. I mean, not all of them, but it's filled with a lot of big companies uh, that are part of this the 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 process. And so one thought is, well, maybe these CNAs will come together, create their own nonprofit that will manage the CVE database uh, and administer it going forward. But this is a big hit uh, globally, not just in the U.S. I, I can't even explain how many, how many tools, how many vendors, how much technology relies uh, on the, the CVE database. So breaking news, we'll see how this, we'll see how this plays out. Hopefully uh, it works out because, as you, as you can see, MITRE continues to be committed to CVE as a global resource. Um, it truly is a global resource, and, and it's uh, kind of scary, a little scary. But, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? I hope it gets worked out.